Welcome to part two of the video, the second half. Going into the second half, we see Enketia come on for Trussard, which I didn't believe he was having a good match. So I welcome that change. And that's another thing I love to see Arteta making quick changes, not resting on his laurels. That's what Arsene Wenger used to do. It takes it ages before he makes a change because he's so stubborn thinking that, okay, I'll leave it. This is my starting lineup and they're going to they're gonna do better. I'll leave them to, for them to do better. Might be a bad accent there, but this is how I see it. Uh, Wenger was so frustrating because he took so long to make changes because he's it's I think that's that's it's the arrogance in him to say that listen I know what I know what I picked my team what I picked is good enough to win this match so I'm gonna stick with them and wait for them to win it but and Arteta was like that when he just came in for the last two seasons I believe Arteta was like that whereas he said listen I'm not gonna change I'll give them till the 80th minute or the 675 minute then I'll make a change but this Arteta I love I'm, I'm angry and disappointed for his lineup in the first place. However, I'm I'm more excited and I'm more, uh, I'm happy with how quick the change he made the change with that Enketia. Enketia came on, and as soon as Enketia came on, we see Saka, Odegaard, and Rice. They started the second half strong. Um, all of them, we start to see the the, the, the play starting to become more fluid. It's, it's still not a drastic improvement from the first half, but I, I see. Um, um, and Ketia make a massive difference um, chasing on the ball some balls that Chossard wouldn't chase um, holding up the ball um, that Chossard weren't doing backing into defenders creating more space for Saka and Martinelli on the wings um, because when Enketia backs in in the defender. Someone needs to come support that defender, and most of the time we see um, the, the, the another defender from the opposite side coming to support in case Enketia controls the ball, that leaving space for Saka and Martinelli. So Enketia does more than what we think, and more than what we see. We need to evaluate the whole picture sometimes to see how much Enketia gives to the team. And in the 55 minutes, we see Vieira and Zinchenko comes on for party and Havertz. And I was so happy with that because I'm one of party fans as well. I'm not one of party's biggest fans. Um, however, I believe that this match, he didn't have the best of match. When he was playing at right back, he tried some ball over the top. It didn't work out. He tried some ball into mid. It did almost every pass that party made went to opposition player. Now, I might be going over the top now, but that's how it felt like. When when he gives the ball away, it felt like every single time he gets the ball, that's what he does. And I know that the stats might not say that because obviously he made some passes that were um, some complete passes. But the feeling I get, I was so frustrated with him because I, and most of it is not his fault. It's because Arteta playing playing him um, played him in the wrong position. So I'm not angry all the time with him, but. It was just everything he does got on my nerve um, throughout this match because I believe that he could have done better. Once again, I don't know what's wrong with him. I don't know if the occasion got to him. I don't know if it's because... Um, I don't know what his problem was today, but he, he did not have the best of match. And I'm, I was happy when Party and Havertz came on. And as soon as Vieira and Zinchenko come on, we see that Zinchenko... Now, I believe that the inverted left-back is a better suited position... If we're not going to play Ben White as inverted right back, we should play Zinchenko as as inverted left back. Um, I don't want to see Kivio as inverted left back. Kivio is not that player for me. Uh, and I know it's, it's a bit uh, reactionary to say that after one match, but throughout the season, I've been thinking the same thing. Kivio does not give me the reassurance like... Um, 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 like Ben White does on the right hand side. He doesn't give me the assurance going forward or inverting in midfield like Zinchenko does. He doesn't give me the assurance like Timber does. Timber um, and Zinchenko and Rice, these three, I believe, if we don't have them in the team, we should just go normal, play normal right, right back, left back, normal four at the back. Don't do nothing inverted. Don't even try with Partey, please. Partey, he might have the occasionally good match at inverted the right back, but he's not going to be consistent because... It takes time to develop in that role, um, f to play that for the entire season or to play that about five to ten matches in a row. And we don't have the time. We see as soon as we slip up, um, Man City ain't going to slip up like how we did today. Well, I don't believe. Um, Brighton ain't going to slip up like how we did today. So these are the small teams that we play now. Um, no offense to Fulham. We need to take these opportunities. We need to go out in the front. We need to climb the table with these smaller teams because now we see we've, we've got Man United next week. Who knows if we're going to win that match? And before I was so, before before this match, I was so confident that we're going to be smashing all 10 teams that we that we played. 
we're gonna be winning all of those 10 matches but now after this display well to be fair after the first two display i was kind of skeptical but now after this i well i've lost confidence in winning against man united now i believe man united may win and that's the thing that they won three three two today and they came from and they came from um i think two one down or one go two goals down to win the match and man united has that grit in them to 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 win like that and i don't think that we had that in this match i know we've got that um that we can harness that sometimes but in this match we didn't get that because we see when um vera and and, and, and zinchenko come on we're, we're starting to control we're starting to oppress we started to, our intensity drastically improve improved and we're starting to play like the team that i know we are all because zinchenko came at left back and inverted in and ben white went on right back we started to play a lot better and because of that we had a back four and that back four could better able um to um allow um our right back and left back to go forward right that allowed um kivio and uh, uh, and saliba to sit while then benoit and zinchenko attack down the wing and rice was just there rice for me would have been the man of the match rice this shows why we need rice in our team this shows why rice is uh, is going to be one of the best midfielders in the world if not already um by the two three performances that he had rice for me he's been cleaning up everything he's been clamping players down if we had two rices in midfield trust me we wouldn't need anyone else everyone could go attack everyone even William Saliba could go in striking uh, Ramsdale wouldn't need to be in goal because how Rice dealt with the defensive duties he clamped players he tracks back he's got those long legs to stretch out to tip the ball off from a, from a player Rice got everything and going forward we see him technical he's so technical as well for a big guy we see him um, um, doing passes around the corners doing one twos on the edge of Fulham's box Rice for me would have been man of the match day if Vieira didn't come on. Vieira was quality. He was brilliant. And that's that's why I feel like this is a bittersweet match. Because I was so I was a Vieira out, right, when he for last season. Because I'm thinking, why do we buy this place? He, I, I see the quality, but he's, he's not improving. He's been here for over a season now. And he's not he's not improved. I don't see an improvement. Arteta keeps keep saying, oh, he's got better. He's giving me um, things to think about, to play him. and da, 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 da. But I, I could not see what Arteta was saying. But in this match, I saw, this is the first time I see Vera running down players to get the ball off them. Like, aggressively. Like, he's up for this match and hopefully going forward this is the veer this is the new Vieira now and we see him cutting down the wing and he, he's the one that gave us the penalty he's the one that earned us the penalty Ch um cutting down the wing and basically uh, um, forcing that, that 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 defender to foul him and, and giving us that penalty so Vieira was a very 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 good um player in this match Iman and Ketia and Ketia keeps running down the line and that makes that makes the, the the pitch more stretch the pitch wider because if Enketia keeps spinning defenders, Trossard was not spinning defenders like how Enketia is. Um, so when Enketia keeps spinning defenders, it gives them something to think about. They have to defend higher because if they try to defend low like they was with Trossard, then Enketia would just spin them. Enketia would just spin them and try to beat the half the offside uh, 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 mark offside line, and so they had to keep thinking so i believe that enketia was perfect for this match perfect it's just a shame that arteta didn't start him and as soon as he come on our um these two led, led to the goal vera swiping in the ball um, and ketia tapping it in first vera got the penalty now he, he, he allowed um nice assist cross to low to, um low nice low assist cross for enketia to tap in one of enketia's specialty um tap uh, um, um um goal pouching so these three changed the dimension of the game as soon as they came on. Um, um, we see a uh, uh, Rice just doing breaking the lines, keep breaking the lines, keep breaking the lines. So there's some nice passes. Zinchenko, as soon as he came on, start breaking the lines as well. And this is how we improve control and our intensity grow in the match because of these three players with Rice. So these four players for me, if I had a man of the match, I would give all four of them. However, if I had to choose one, it would be Vieira because he's the one that got won us the penalty. He's the one that got the assist for Enketia goal. Now, when we got the penalty, I see this referee coming over to Saka, telling him that the ball wasn't on the line, wasn't on, on, on the spot, and telling him to put the ball on the spot, trying to get in Saka's head. And I believe that some of these referees, 
they do these things on purpose. I think that it might support like Man City or it might support uh, Newcastle or Brighton or Man United or one of these teams that's competing with us for the league or potentially competing with us for the league uh, or for fourth place or whatever in his mind at that time. Because when we're taking corners, no one says that's the same way, that's the exact same position we put the ball when we're taking corners. However, when he's taking penalties, he's trying to say put it directly in the, in the middle of, of, of the, the penalty mark. And the the funny thing is that he came, took it and put it in the middle. Saka took it back up and put it back where it was in the first place. And he pretended like, okay, that's okay. I'm like, what? Like, if you're going to be adamant that something is wrong, like, stick to that energy. Like, you're going to tell him to Saka to move the ball and then Saka moved it back. And you're just going to say, okay, whatever. And just move back like it was nothing. He's trying to play mind games with Saka. And then after we see Divock Origi coming in, trying to say something, trying to wind the referee, see someone, one of our players came and dragged him away. I think it was Kivio came and dragged him away. And then this is why I say, it take, Odegaard should have been the one going to Saka now, saying, you know, calm down. Don't let them get in your head. Just play your game. Just, just, just be comfortable and take the penalty. But it was Zinchenko that came and tried to comfort Saka after because Zinchenko saw what they're trying to do. They're trying to get in Saka's head. That's what they were trying to do. So Zinchenko came and gave him some comforting words and Saka come and took the penalty and scored bottom right. And that's another thing where Arteta, I've got so much praise for him, but it's just this match. I can't give him praise for this match for the lineup. But I've got so much praise for him because Saka, um, Odegaard went back to take the penalty, a last penalty, and now Saka is back again. And I don't know what this was discussed between Saka and Odegaard. However, Arteta allowed them to do what they want, that what they see fit on the pitch. And he's ruthless. He, uh, Arteta is, is that ruthless that if Saka miss a penalty, it might be off um, for another three penalties again. And this is the same thing I want to see with the keeping, with the keeper rule. Ramsdale made a mistake. Well, I don't believe it's a mistake to keep him out. When he does make a mistake to keep him out of the team, Raya needs to come in and Raya needs to show us why we bought him, right? Because um, this is the thing that you, he needs to be ruthless all over the pitch. And another thing is that when, when Havertz came off, I was happy for Arteta because there's lots of people with agenda saying that because Arteta paid 65 million for Havertz, he will never go on the bench or we will never um, miss a game. And we see Arteta took him off in the six in the 55 minute, 55th minute um, for, uh, for for Vieira and 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 and. and and Zinchenko, Havertz came off in the 55 minute. So for me, that's a big statement from Arteta. If you're not playing good enough, come off my pitch. You, you, if you're not gonna give your all, if you're gonna keep on make, if you're gonna keep making silly mistakes, you don't deserve to be on my pitch. And I love that from Arteta. So this dispels all these people that are saying, oh, there's a, with this, uh, these agendas against Arteta saying, oh, he's not gonna um, have Havertz on the bench or he's not gonna sub Havertz off because this was the first time we see Havertz came off, especially in a situation like this where we were losing and Arteta took him off in the 55 minute 55th minute right for me I, I was so happy for Arteta in that moment now one thing I hate about Arsenal whenever we score we always take the foot off the gas we get complacent we're starting to do um, uh, uh, um, starting to play one twos we're starting to pass to the keeper we're starting to play possession football and I hate that about Arsenal we, we haven't got that killer instinct in us to be like some wild animals we, we haven't got that killer instinct in us and that's what makes great champions that's what city have when city be like four nil up city is trying to get five six seven eight nine that's the mentality of winners that's the mentality of champions to kill that team off right eat your food eat your food eat it all off don't leave any uh, any any of your food for later eat your eat it all off right now and that's what we need to learn to have that killer instinct that wild beast mentality to destroy our opponent right and we've done a bit of that because we see that um that guy i forgot his name um it was down the guy with the dreadlocks he was down and we didn't care we still played on and that's how we got the goal we see full of manager getting upset um i think it was bassi yeah bassi full of manager going upset um and I was happy with that because that shows that 
we sh- we're not always gonna be Mr. Nice Guy. We're nice when we wanna be. But you see, when it's time to fight, we ain't got no time to be nice, right? It's not a co- it's not a requirement to say that if someone's down, we kick the ball out. If it's an head injury, I will I will understand, right? I would understand for us um, um, to kick the ball out. But if it's not an head injury, play on, right? We're losing. If we're winning, you can have the ball kick it out if you want. But we're losing. We ain't got time for that. So I'm happy with that ruthlessness that we showed in that moment. However, we need to learn to kill games off when we're in the ascendancy. Fulham had 10 men. We Fulham had a man sent off and we still didn't manage to kill the match off. And that allowed Paulinho to get a goal. And I was very angry. I was very angry. So my final thoughts on this and the, the match against Fulham we made it difficult for ourselves we need to improve with those two mistakes we need to improve on our passing accuracy and our scanning of the pitch Bakayo Saka that's for you we need to improve these things going forward because it's the third match of the season and going deeper when you go into Champions League when you go into other competition this is not a good start having to we struggled to be in terms of scoreline 2-1 against Nottingham Forest and 1-0 against Crystal Palace and now a draw that's a decline one goal decline going backwards right we're going backwards in terms of uh, we scored two against the first match we scored one the second match and now we draw albeit albeit it's 2-2 we still draw right and it's like a backwards and I don't like it I don't like it Arteta needs to fix himself up and um, and Ketia needs to start if it's not Gabriel J, and I don't believe Gabriel J is just, if Gabriel J is going to start, we need to play the formation we were playing last season. If Nketiah is going to start, Arteta, I will allow him a bit leniency to try a thing. Because we see when he try a thing, Nketiah always knows how to play in different systems. However, I, I still don't want that formation, but I won't be as angry as I am today, right? If he starts Nketiah and try something different, just with a one player, don't be changing up the whole system. You can change a player's position. Like if you're gonna have Havertz, um, um, Trussard coming in for Hazard, Havertz in that middle. Are you gonna come? Are you gonna have um, Smithrow coming in for for Havertz in that middle? I'll understand that. But don't be changing like a whole three, four, five changes and changing the system and changing the form. Nah, not right now. And Havertz need to have a little spell on the bench right now. He needs to be ruthless, ruthless with Havertz. We haven't seen Smith Rowe all season. And I know he's going to get his turn. Or Fabio Vieira. Vieira had a very good match. He should not be at the team right now. Un- unless he's starting to underperform again. He should be in the next match. So the next match should be Odegaard and, ha- uh, uh, and, and Vieira in attacking mid. Left attacking mid and right attacking mid. And Zinchenko needs to start the next match. Forget about um, playing... Um, um, Kivio at left back if Kivio is going to play at left back Gabriel should come back in the team so that's why we miss Gabriel we miss Gabriel in all these three matches we missed him because last match and we especially miss him in this match reason being in this match we played against Fulham and the last match we played against Fulham Gabriel got the first goal right so we needed Gabriel in this match you see the header Paulina scored and the, um, the, 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 the finish Paulina scored from the corner, that, that low strike, if Gabriel was there, that ball wouldn't have gone in. And I will, I will say this right now, if Gabriel was there, that ball wouldn't have gone in because then there's lots of defensive player would be on the pitch. Zinchenko is, is short. First of all, Zinchenko is the one that gave away that ball for, for, for a corner. It was Zinchenko. He did not defend it properly and gave away the ball for, for that corner. And then he whipped in and he still wasn't there for the header. If that Gabriel was there, he would have been in that position. Saliba would would have been white. Uh, um, Saliba, uh, um, um, Gabriel or Zinchenko would be on the left. But if not, then, then it would be Kivio. Right, and it will be four top, two very tall players in the box, and then you will have um, Declan Rice there as well. It will be five tall players in the box to edit the ball out. But because Gabriel wasn't there, I believe that I will say that and I will defend that. If Gabriel was there, I know that we won't be able to tell because obviously matches finish and we, we he wasn't there, so it, people might say that oh, spe- you know, I'm speculating right now, and it won't. It's not necessarily true. If Gabo was there, I was saying it right now. If Gabo was there, that goal wouldn't have scored. So, uh, uh, um, uh, um, Arteta needs to stop this 
this experiment that he's doing playing party at right back and let's go back to winning ways let's go back to how we were last season let's go back to that attacking aggressive beautiful football that we were playing some soccer bonito let's get back there right so that's that's just my my take on the match we just saw um we could have done much better i'm so disappointed with the match and the results but i'll catch you in the next video guys goodbye